Hi, we're uh, talking about the process of incorporation of a C Corp. Uh, and what we're talking about today are some startup specific issues around incorporation um, that folks should know about when they're incorporating startups. Um, and one of the issues that's important is the stock options plan. Uh, before we get into kind of how the stock option plan works and what it is, uh, it's important to understand that all of the addendums around the corporate process and all the documents that you'll see uh, tend to serve one of two purposes. They're either, they either provide incentives, uh, which you can use to better run your company, or uh, they provide some sort of legal protection. Uh, and we'll talk about what, what the options pool does and what, what kind of incentives it creates in this case. Uh, and then we'll also talk about um, maybe some potentially some bad outcomes if this isn't done right, uh, or you know just basically the reasons why uh, you institute an option plan. So uh, I'm calling this the stock options plan. There are a lot of uh, different words used to describe this. Um, one of those words, uh, uh, people tend to talk about an equity incentive plan or a stock plan or uh, an options plan. Uh, they're all talking about the same thing. Uh, and there are two documents that make up uh, this, this stock options plan. The first is a stockholder's consent document. And what's that essentially is saying is that the stockholders agree to create an options plan um, and allow the directors and officers and board to use the options plan uh, to whatever means they, they deem necessary. So that's the consent you get from the stockholders. The other is, uh, is called an equity incentive plan. And that's essentially the rules governing um, how your plan's going to work and what the, the reason for your plan's existence is. So uh, I'm going to erase that, but those are the two documents that you would see that would get um, returned to you after you incorporate. So let's talk about the stock shop options plan and what it's for. So basically just in layman's terms in general, you use stock options to incent employees of your corporation to continue working for you. Uh, and it's a way that they get to slowly um, earn the right to own equity in the company uh, over time. So it can be a powerful incentive and also it uh, represents a big financial upside uh, when a company uh, goes through an exit uh, that is a valuable exit. So, and that's kind of how most people understand options, but really uh, as a CEO you should understand what uh, the options are used for and why. So the first thing they're used for is to attract and retain people for important positions. Um, generally these are VP level and above type of positions, uh, very key people inside the company. Uh, you may give them a big options grant that would be a chunk of the company, say 1% for example, uh, that would vest over time. And those options are used uh, over the course of their vesting uh, to maintain or attract and retain those employees. So I continue working for you because I vest slowly over time and I gain a little bit more, um, a little bit more access to stock. Uh, it's actually probably important right now to remind everyone that options are not stock. They are the right to purchase stock in the future. That's why you hear me saying not that I own equity, but that I own the right to own equity in the future. Uh, and you can learn more about that by watching our, uh, any of our lessons on options. Um, but I'm going to continue with this, assuming that you guys know that stuff. Uh, the second reason that the option plan is in existence is it provides a sense for regular employees, directors, or consultants. So. Uh, these are folks that serve any other sort of purpose in your company besides the key people. You may be giving them smaller grants, uh, but it allows you to give them some incentive to really kind of pay them for their service. And if you don't have cash, uh, often service providers or consultants will take equity in lieu of cash uh, as payment. You can choose to vest those over time or you can just give straight grants. Uh, that's up to you. Also, there's an important tax issue. Um, when you, essentially when you receive anything of value uh, from someone, you have to, the IRS says that you have to pay taxes on it. So if I were to give you 25% of my company in the form of stock, and let's say that those shares were worth $1,000, um, you would have to pay taxes on that $1,000. Uh, so in this case, if I give you stock worth 25 grand, the IRS says, they want $10,000 of it as taxes, right? Um, that's bad, and it's a bad way to incent employees because you're giving them a tax liability. Uh, options don't have a tax liability because options um, are the right to own that stock in the future. And you actually have to pay, exercise the option uh, to turn it into stock. So if I were to give you the exact same number of options that this 
$25,000 worth of stock represents, uh, then you would have no tax liability. So that's important. It's a way to defer um, tax liability for your employees. And then also options pool, um, um, this is an important concept. What we refer to as the options pool is used for those grants. So uh, your company um, will create a number of shares that will be handed out for this purpose, and that's called the options pool. There's a, another lesson on that, and that's, what you're, that's where you're going to be grabbing these shares to give them to people. Uh, so you don't have to create new shares every time you uh, hand out options as an incentive. And then also, um, there are documents used to grant these options. Uh, and generally, this is an option agreement that you will have an employee sign. That's part of your, it should be provided as part of your corporation package. And you can fill in the blanks of, you know, I'm going to give so-and-so shares, and they're going to vest over this period. Uh, and then you have your employees sign those documents. Super important to get those signed and keep them on record signed, because um, that avoids disputes in the future. So that being said, let's talk about, um, well, first of all, as a reminder, these things are incentives. Um, incentive to attract key employees, incentive to pay directors or consultants, uh, good incentive that there's no tax liability, and they come out of the options pool, and protection is having a signed document that says what you agreed to, so there's no uh, dispute over anything verbal. So that's a bad outcome right there for not having signed documents is somebody comes back later and says, hey, no, you promised me X, Y, Z, and there's some confusion about what they were promised, so keep those documents signed. Um, you know, another uh, bad thing that could potentially happen is if you don't create an options pool and you have no equity incentive plan, good employees are going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to work for that company because I don't have any ownership or equity in the company. So you're going to lose your opportunity to recruit good people. Um, and then, you know, a bad outcome for employees or directors or consultants is that you maybe when you're starting you have no cash and you always have to pay them cash uh, to execute their services. That's no good either. Um, you want some flexibility in how you incent those folks. And also if they're helping you early on out of the goodness of their heart or they're because your friends, they're your friends, you want them to have some upside in the company's success. Um, so those are, those are some outcomes that you can avoid, meaning that you'll be able to recruit good people, um, there won't be any arguments over who owns what uh, and who is granted what, uh, and you will be able to effectively pay um, directors and officers. Anything else that we missed? That's good.